morning and welcome to Winnipeg. Okay, you can stop looking at that box over there. It's what you think it might be. Yeah, earlier this morning I went online and, uh, oh, I guess a couple of hours ago or more now it was, and, and uh, Canada Post had just notified me that uh, they were going to deliver Corey's package this morning, which they have. So, uh, I guess in, in a sense we're going to have a rollback, but all it's going to do is just talk about that a little bit. Okay. Oh, what's this tin of number 11 Humbrol here? Hmm. Morning, Jason. This is natural steel, and it reminds me very much of Humbrol number 11 silver. I did catch your episode on, the, uh, on that paint. <laughs> and I just wanted to prove to you I really do have a tin of number 11 here. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who are wondering, this, this tin of Humbrol paint goes back to the early 80s and it's still usable. Yeah, uh, I, I, I've, I've meant to do more with, the, with enamels and brushing and stuff like that, but I, I don't know, I'm stuck in a rut. I'm stuck in this Tamiya XF paint rut, you know? <laughs> okay, now I guess I could have had a rollback if I had a video of what I did last night. I got the remaining antennas on, so all eight of them are on. We'll, we'll recompose and I'll just briefly show them to you. And uh, then we'll sort of carry on here. But in, in, the, in the meantime, let's just have our little rollback to Corey's package here. I thought I was going to have to sign for this. Well, you know what? He probably watches the model ship and he knows who I am. Well, Tori, it's here. You know what it is. I know what it is. And Tennessee Jim knows what it is. We're going to have to have a box opening today. I don't know if it's going to be in today's episode. But uh, maybe I'll do a standalone be uh, video on it. I'll do an 8K special. Uh, because this is special. So we'll see what happens. Okay, I gotta tell you here, last night when I was putting these things on, I was having quite a time. Well, first of all, if you're only doing one and it's a little bit crooked, you're not going to notice. But when you get eight of them all sort of grouped together like this it's it's quite easy to see if uh, you know they're not all at the same angle because they sort of well I guess I don't need to elaborate you, you get the idea anyway we got them on and uh, now, one of the viewers was, was talking about the uh, flotation baskets. I, I think it's the uh, photo etch number one or something. Anyway, um, I didn't forget it. I knew we, we had to put it on. Uh, actually, we have, put, we have to put two of them on. But let's, uh, let's sort of deal with that right now. Okay, they are photo etch E1. And uh, we have to put one of these on each side. Now, uh, quite a while ago, I made up, way back in step number six, we made up about, a can't remember, I think it's something like a, about a dozen of them. I'm noticing that this one here has <clears throat> gotten itself a little bit bent out of shape. But I, I think I can easily straighten that. So what we'll do is we'll use this one to go on this side right here because this is the side that's going to be up against the back of the case and if I if I mesh this thing up 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to grab the inside. Maybe I'll use the uh, the tweezers with the with the rubber here. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just do this off camera. I think because I'm. Well, it's not too bad actually. Okay, now which side is it that? Okay, this that is actually the side that has to go against the. You probably can't see it, but they're they're not perfectly square on the ends, it's sort of rounded, and I think it has to go kind of like a basket affair. And it's going to go at that sort of an angle, and. Uh, it has to go right in here against this uh, part of the uh, bulkhead. I'll, I'll recompose. I'm probably going to use uh, I don't know, CA, CA, uh, CA thin. I think just try to put a little bit right along the edge there, and I think that this will probably stick to it. At least that's the plan. Okay, so a few moments ago I was thinking, now how am I going to? keep this thing from, you know, falling down. Uh, you know, I want it to stay in place. And then I remembered, oh yeah, we can still upend this this thing. It's it's small enough. So, uh, yeah, let's see what we can do here. All right. So I'm going to want to work on it. Now this shouldn't be anything that's going to fall off of there. I've uh, okay. All right. All right. Don't spill your coffee now. Okay. Now we're going to just drop it right there. I'll, I'll recompose and you'll be able to see what I'm doing a lot better too. Okay, we're, we're just going to do a, a dry run here. And uh, this is actually going to be the first time that I'm laying this down on here. I'll, I'll just move you in just a little bit here. All right. Now, as near as I can tell, the the top of this is supposed to go just underneath the the splinter this uh, this splinter rail right here. And um, I I these hoops are a little bit in my road, but I'm afraid to remove them because. When I start messing around in here, where's something that's a little bit longer? Maybe I'll use the uh, the holder downer here. Okay, as near as I can tell, the top edge of this that I'm just almost touching right now is supposed to come right to the right at the bottom of the splinter rail. So actually, then this is should go up a little bit here. More like this. Yeah, that, that, that looks about... It's kind of hard to tell now. Is, is the top of this supposed to be on the same plane as, as this deck that I'm touching right now? Or... I, that, just let me look at the manual again here. It appears to me that maybe the basket should be a little bit higher. Something like that. Okay, that, that looks like about right to me. Okay, so let's just sort of 
maybe move this back like this out of the way. We should be able to pick it up and move it. Uh, and put some CA right, right there and just let it sort of s stick on there. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll put a new uh, spout on the end of my CA tube, uh, CA uh, thin, and then uh, I can sort of reach in there. At least that's the plan. Okay, a moment ago I closed my window, so you're not going to be able to hear the birds chirping. And well, I uh, turned my AC on because it's it's 32.5 outside right now. Now can I? I'd have to come in at a slightly different angle. I don't want this to suddenly come gushing out either. So you won't be able to hear the crickets. Let's see, that's not working. This this one hoop is just really bothering me here. It won't cooperate. So I got to turn this bottle upside down almost to get it to flow. This is not working. Oh, uh, Peter from Moscow Modeling was wondering if I dub the crickets in. No. Nope. So when you hear the crickets, those are real. And how many of you noticed in the video when I went uh, for the bike ride, we were going along the, the Chief Pegasus Trail and uh, the traffic was horrendously noisy and yet you could still hear the crickets chirping over top of the, 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 the din of the traffic. No, I just can't get in there. What is the problem here? I don't want to be accidentally catching on any, any antennas here. Now this is, I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to use the applicator. I was hoping to be able to use this thing, but I can see it's just not going to work. So I'm going to have to just dollop it out with the applicator. Yeah, I should have known this wasn't going to work. Now, even if a little bit of that, um, where's my other, this thing here, just sort of put just a little bit of pressure on it. I think that should stay there. I don't want to be putting a CA on the inside because it'll sort of mark up the paint, whereas right now it, I, th I think that's probably going to work. At least I hope it will. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here on the other side. All right. I have said this so many times, even I am tired of hearing myself say it. Uh, we're going to save the turrets and uh, turret-based radar units and so on uh, until, until the end of the build. Um, so, like, for instance, it's, it wants us to drop turrets and, and our radar unit and stuff like that down right now here in step 42. And if we were to go back, uh, it wanted us to drop some, some, some more down in step 40. And I think even earlier than that. Anyway, the, the idea is that by now we, we would have had a, a whole slew of, of turrets, like right here and right here. And there's there's three right there go together, and all and the same on the other side, and another one up here, another one down here. We're gonna save those till the end. Okay. Um, like I said, even I'm sick of hearing myself say that. Now, as near as I can tell, now that we've got the Photo Edge E1 mounted on both sides, we should be able to turn the page. 
So let's turn the page. All right. Step 43. Huh, officially. Okay, it looks like we have to put more little baskets on, which are already made. I think I've got about well over a dozen of these things made. And and they're, they should be easy to glue them on. I probably let gravity be my friend again. And, and then we've got some railing. Oh my. Oh, this one here we already did. Yeah, we did that a couple of weeks ago, remember? So we don't need to do that one. And these other ones, okay, these ones that are you know, go at 90 degree angles. They're going to be fairly easy. This one has one easy bend. These two are straight. This one has a bit of a curve in it, but I think we'll figure it out. Where does it go here? Oh, you know what? We're going to have to turn this around because, uh, yeah, the, uh, or do we? No, we've got it in the right direction. What's the matter with me? Let's just, okay, I had it in the wrong, the wrong way for this one. Um, okay, uh, yeah, we got it in the right direction. Oh boy, I'm losing it. Um, okay. Well, let's... Uh, I, I don't want to glue these on right now. Um, I think maybe what I should do is see if we can find some uh, some of these photo edge pieces here. Looks like a lot of them are on the C sprue. And the G sprue. Or fret, rather. Uh, what time we got going on here? 1.21 in the afternoon. Okay, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I have a uh, coffee visitor. So today is Monday. I'll be getting a coffee visitor probably in about... Oh, he's he's due to be here and not till 3.30, but, you know, I like to get all wound up and caught up. And then, pardon my reach here. Okay, now what are we going to do about this? Uh, I, I probably have time to do a box opening today, but I want to I want to take my time at it and maybe maybe do it this evening, after my coffee visitor leaves and uh, and uh, I'll, yeah I want to do it in eight K and so we can get in nice and sharp and maybe put the macro lens on we'll just we'll just see we'll, you know so so uh, yeah thanks Corey uh, really appreciate that and uh, I think I'm going to wind it up for this episode. It's a beautiful day. What have we got temperature-wise? It's 32.3 right now in the shade in the backyard. Beautiful for going biking. Um, I hope it stays that way. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of uh, uh, betwixt and between right now as to what to do here. Well, let, let's just get uh, some some of this photo etch here, just just for the fun of it. Let's see what see what it looks like. Okay, we need a total of 16 pieces of railing. And uh, almost all of them are on the C frets. And only two of them are on the G frets. And they are G9s. And there is only two pieces of railing left, so on the G fret. And then... Oh, I was going to say, and then that's it for the G fret, but there, there's some more stuff going on here. Okay, let, let's just get the G ones on ca off on camera, and then the uh, the rest I'll just try and quickly do off camera. Okay, here we go with our G nines. And, uh, okay, now I want you to notice something here. You notice that the stanchion it comes up above the rail or below the rail, whichever way you want to look at it. And I, I do believe one of the viewers mentioned that this is to hold the bottom rail up above the deck. But I just know that there is no way that I'm going to be able to do that. I'm, what I'm going to do is I am going to leave them leave them on, but be very careful now not to 
accidentally cut them because it, it would be easy to cut it there, but that's not where we want to cut it. Okay. Oh, this one has one on the end. I, I didn't notice that. Okay, we got it. Well, I think I'm going to call it a day. Uh, that'll be it for today, except for later on this evening, most likely. I'll be uh, dealing with this, and I'll be doing it in 8K. And uh, it probably won't uh, air until tomorrow morning. Uh, it takes YouTube quite a while to, uh, to uh, process 8K. Uh, occasionally, it'll be up for 12 hours, and it'll still only be at 4K. But it, that, does, that doesn't matter, it's not a big deal. But that, that's probably one of the reasons why I don't do everything in 8K. It was a little over five years ago now I started doing everything in 4K. And uh, YouTube had the same problem. It, it took them a while to, to, to process the 4K video. Now they've got that under control. Eventually they'll get 8K under control. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, enough about 4K, 8K. 1080p and all that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it quits here. Uh, oh my goodness, exactly two o'clock almost. Uh, it's 33.1 Celsius right now, 33.1. It's once again, why am I sitting here at the model table? Oh, else I should save all this for the winter time, right? And that's tomorrow. <laughs> well, it'll seem like tomorrow. Anyway. Thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we will see you tomorrow. Uh, yeah, 